Right, we're under, we're under a little bit of time pressure today. You see, we've got a friend arriving for a visit. She's going to be coming in a couple of hours time. And I was like, you know what? It's going to be fine. It's going to be totally fine. I'll get up early. I'll start filming early. It's going to be good. But then I forgot to charge the microphone. What the hell happened here? The next problem that's making the time pressure problem not any easier is the whole subject of today's video has to be just thrown out. The whole subject was going to be on this here. This is a Japanese Visu Daikok jacket, a Type 3. A uh, quick background, so I was chatting to Dave on Japanalog and he was at an Avisu store. I'd cured myself of my Avisu addition, addiction. Um, Avisu addition, that's also a good way to put it. I'd cured myself of this addiction, but then he got me back into it. He, he's an enabler. But anyway, so I found this. And you'll understand in a second why I'm being so tentative about touching this. I, I found this on the Indonesian Etsy and it's in incredibly good condition. It, I don't think it's ever been washed and that's possibly the problem. This smells so, so bad. So there's no way that I'm going to do a video and get up close and personal with it until it's been washed. But then there's the essential question, does it go in the bathtub or does it go in the washing machine? I think for this particular time it's going to be a tub wash. Because you see the arc at the back here, you can see this has been hand painted and it's already pretty dry and cracked, which is awesome. But with the, with the spin cycle in the washing machine, it's going to be pretty unpredictable how this is going to crack and wear off. And I don't really want to do that just yet. The water is going a really nasty looking greeny brown, which I, I don't think that's dirt. I think that's just the, the chemicals and the starch and whatever else was left over in the denim from the weaving process. It doesn't look like this jacket's been worn enough to, to really pick up enough dirt and grime. I think the, the fusty smell was just, it was in a humid country, in storage for a long time. And I'm really hoping that this wash will get rid of that. Okay, so that's that done, but it still begs the question exactly what we're actually gonna do for a video today. Kinda luckily, I do have a backup plan. In this box, this box, are a pair of jeans that I have been meaning to do a review on and I've been constantly, constantly asked to do a review on since right at the beginning of this channel. At least I hope in this box there's a pair of jeans that I've been asked and I've been meaning to do a review on right from the beginning of this channel. I've had this for like three weeks and I'm not... I've had this for three weeks and I've not opened the box. So I, I guess there's no sending it back now. Actually, I'm wondering how many of you can guess which, which pair of jeans this is. Uh, leave your guesses in the description below. Don't cheat. In the description below, I meant the comments below, which is next to or under the description below. It's on, the, it's on your way down there. Okay, good. Thank God for that. It is a pair of Brave Star Selvage Denim Jeans. Now, I think the reason that so many people have been asking me so often for a review of a pair of Brave Star Jeans is that these are very, very affordable. I think they, they go for what, $110, $99, something like that. So in the world of raw denim, that is, is very, very, it's very cheap. Like, and I guess if people are coming to this channel looking for information, they're also going to be just entering into the world of raw denim. And a pair of raw denims for, yeah, $99, just over $100. That's going to look very, very inviting. But the thing is with Brave Stars is they are a direct consumer brand, meaning they get sell, sold directly from the guys who make them. So they cut out that middleman. So there's no need for a wholesale markup. That's why they can make these jeans so damn cheap. But they are, they're a US brand. That's part of the thing about it. They're a US brand, made in America, made in LA. And that means that they're quite difficult to get in Europe. They're, they will send them out to Europe, 
but the T's and C's on their website give me the impression that if something goes wrong along the way, you're, you're kind of fucked. So yeah, I'm gonna get into that a little bit later, but just now let's just have a look at the jeans. The way I managed to get hold of this particular pair of jeans is I found them on the, the German eBay or the German eBay Kleinanzeige. It's, I don't know, like Craigslist, but a little bit better. Whatever, I managed to find a pair of these there for a pretty decent price. I was thinking like, yeah, it's about time that I really had a look at a pair of Brave Star jeans. So I, even though they're not in my size, I don't think at least, I'm gonna try them on in a second, but yeah, I thought this was a good opportunity to, to get them my hands on them and really have a look. Cause I, I think I've ended up, because so many people love them, I've ended up recommending them a couple of times and they were even almost like, uh, I think they were next to Ironheart for the most popular jeans the, that you guys picked. Most popular jeans that you guys picked? Yeah, it was that. It was that video that's linked up in the corner somewhere on five of the 10 jeans that every guy should know, jeans brands that every guy should know. Anyway, so this is gonna be a completely raw first impressions video. It's gonna be kind of a review is gonna be completely unscripted. I will try not to just jammer on too much. We'll see how that's gonna go. I think I've, I think it's too late for that already. Where are we gonna start? Well, let's start with the with the denim. The These have clearly been worn quite a lot and they've been washed by the feel of it quite a lot as well. I certainly hope the guy gave them a wash before sending them over. Maybe he didn't. It doesn't smell nearly as bad as that jacket though. Yeah, the, the denim here is, I'm guessing around about the 12 ounce mark. I can already see up here at the coin pocket that it is a white selvage ID. They were getting their denim from Cone Mills. I don't know, so Cone Mills used to have the Cone Mills white oak plant, which is famous because it used to make the denim for Levi's. They were getting their denim from Cone Mills. I don't know if it was the white oak plant. I'm not too sure if there are any, they're doing that anymore. And because these came from just some random guy on eBay, I don't really know where this denim's from. It's a really nice looking denim. It's got some signs of wear. It's got those signs of wear where somebody has, has washed them quite often. So I call that vintage fades, not too high contrast. And that kind of makes sense with the fact that denim's quite light, but it does have some, some quite nice character in it. It's definitely not slubby, but it is a little bit uneven. And that kind of works with the sort of vintage fades that we're seeing here. Then when we're up here at the top, let's just start with the, with the hardware, with the buttons and the rivets. It's a laurel leaf design on the buttons and a sort of burnished brass look to them. I don't think that's natural. That's, uh, I think it just is made that way. So they're quite shiny on top, but maybe that scratches off. Maybe we'll get some patina. It's a button fly as well. And it's also laurel leaf buttons. They are solid. They're well set. They're not popping off. Button holes, also solid, well done. It's a three button fly and yeah, no complaints there. The rivets are a similar kind of, um, not gunmetal, it's like a brass version, like basically an aged looking brass. They look a little bit more natural than the buttons, to be honest. Okay, the button at the top and the button, the fly look, one's more, like the fly buttons are slightly more coppery and then the, the top button's slightly more brass. That's just me telling you that, that's not a complaint and it's just how it is. The the copper, the, we'll start that again. The rivets, they are more, like the, the buttons with the sort of brass look, and they look a little bit more authentically patinaed up. They are also well set. Uh, they look really good and got some little bit of like poke through from the, from the denim when they were set. Uh, do we have any? No, no hidden rivets, but that's, that's fine. That's completely, that's a, a superfluous thing. So that's buttons, button fly, Button holes, rivets, coin pocket next, I guess. Uh, coin pocket is in the Levi's style. It's actually, it's quite deep. Um, you could fit, I don't know, a lighter in there. It'd be annoying to get coins out of there, but it's always that way. Uh, where's my lighter actually? Doesn't matter, it would fit a Zippo in it. And then moving on to the belt loops. 
Okay, I mean, like, they are tucked underneath the waistband. That's always something that I like to see. It's like, it's, it's I don't know if it's difficult to do it, because I have no idea how a pair of jeans goes together. But it's a nice detail that's, that not many brands do. And I guess it requires one extra manufacturing step. So, yeah, I'm happy to see that. Then, what else do we have in the front? Uh, we've got the front pockets. Um, they are a good, they're a decent size. They've got a decent sized pocket opening. And they're riveted at the side here. The pocket bags themselves. Cotton twill fabric. It's a little bit on the light side, but yeah, it's not the lightest I've found. And yeah, they're gonna be durable enough, I'd say. To the construction on the inside, just let's have a look, quick look up at the top. We have a Made in the USA label. On the inside of the fly, there's more of that salvage ID. The construction looks good, it looks, it looks clean, it looks, it looks nice. Got the Brave Star label here, so a woven label. It's not overly branded on the inside, which, which I appreciate, I like. And then we've got the, the waist size, 33. I'm curious if these are going to fit me because I've heard different things about Brave Star. I've heard that they're they're really really low rise, which yeah, that could be a problem with me. And I've heard that they're not really vanity sizing, so 33 might be just far far too small. Anything else on the inside? No, nope, that's pretty much it. Over to the back. I have a really nice thick full grain vegetable, natural veg tanned leather patch that's had the Brave Star logo embossed. And the embossing has, has come out a little bit. Does embossing come out? Uh, you can't see the logo too well anymore. I'm presuming that's because these have been washed in the machine a few too, too many times. And it's just, yeah, you're losing the detail there. Maybe it just wasn't stamped very hard in the beginning. That is really going to patina up beautifully. That's for a pair of jeans that are 100 bucks. It's, it's nice to see something of that quality. Uh, done the belt loops already. Back pockets. I, I don't know, what do you say about back pockets? They're unlined. Um, you can see a little bit of the, how the denim would have been when it's new in the back pockets. Okay, this is, this is personal preference, but yeah, I really don't like this, this star here. I'd, it's, it's an embroidered star, it's, it's cleanly done. And I know it's it's a called Brave Star, but that's not really it's not really my thing. It's a bit too in your face, and it's, whatever. It's, you you like it or you don't. It's simple as that, and I don't particularly like it. You can see a little bit more in the pockets of how that sort of uneven texture of this denim, which yeah, this is an interesting denim. I really would like to know where this was woven. I could maybe write to the guy and, and find out. Whatever. Down to the bottom, yeah, uh, as we saw on the coin pocket and the inside of the fly, there's a white selvage ID. It's quite wide down here. I think that's got something to do with machines that they, that they um, do this seam with. I'm not 100% sure, but I think I heard that. And then there is a, a chain stitched hem, which yeah, is done very, very well. It's cleanly done and yeah, the most minimal amount of roping down at the hem here as well. Okay, yeah, really, all of the things that I'm seeing on these jeans are things that I would expect to see on a jeans that on a jeans on jeans that cost a lot, lot more than these do. So really, my first impressions is I, I'm impressed. I can I can really see why people swear by them. I, I really can. There's a a bit of a caveat here. So as much as, I will preface this by saying I've never spoken to the Brave Star guys. I don't know their side of the story. But in the, the video that I did on the five of the 10 denim brands that every guy should know, there was, I think, a 50-50 split between people going like, yes, Brave Stars are amazing. And then 50% of other people, 50% of other people, 50% Half the guys were like, yes, Brave Star are amazing. And the other half of the guys were like, yeah, their jeans are good, but their customer service is absolutely atrocious. And then I, I had quite a 
feuds or nightmare stories that if something goes wrong with your order, you are left pretty much on your own to sort it out. And that's exactly why I didn't order a pair of these to do a review on them before. If you look at the terms and conditions on their website to do with international shipping, it's like, we will ship international, but if something goes wrong, it's completely on you. And it seems from what I could read in the comments that that is similar to the, the kind of customer service that you get from the guys if something goes wrong when you're in the domestic United States. So yeah, that's, that's, that's really not so good. That's the, that's the one thing that I would, I would say counts against getting a pair of Brave Stars if you're in the market for a cheap, good quality pair of jeans. But enough of that, let's actually see if they fit and if they do fit, how they fit. Okay, nobody laugh at my long socks, okay? It's winter time and it's cold and these keep me cozy. I'm pretty dubious that these are gonna go on. Okay, so far so good. Huh, okay, so they, they fit me. I'm just gonna go and check in the mirror to see how these fit. I'll be back in a second. <sighs> yeah, the fit for, for what it is, I think it's like a slim tapered fit is actually really quite good. It's, don't think it's my fit. It's a bit too skinny for that, especially in this lightweight denim, but it's, it's, really, it's really not bad. I do see what people mean about the, the low rise. Yeah, especially for my body type with the thick thighs, that's, that's gonna get a bit annoying. I would definitely have to wear a, wear a belt with these. But other than that, yeah, I'd say these would be a very, very decent summer gym with this lightweight denim. Right, okay, to sum up, and if you're wondering why the table suddenly changed color, it's a tablecloth. Yeah, I, I, I get it now. I, I really do understand why people love Brave Star so much. All the details are there for a very good, very basic pair of jeans. Build quality is there, and I don't think you're gonna find jeans that are all that much cheaper. Maybe, what's that brand called that I've also never seen, Gustin? I think they do jeans that are maybe a tiny bit cheaper, but yeah, this is really quite impressive that they can do it this well and for that low of a price. I mean, I, I guess this is a recommendation to, to Brave Star themselves. Guys, if you can work on your customer services a little bit better, um, as I said, I've had no personal experience with this. This is just purely anecdotal. But if you can get that a little bit, bit better, then I think it would be really a good thing. That's, as far as I can see, that's the only thing that counts against getting a pair of Brave Star jeans. Uh, these, are, these are great. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. Okay, so let's, let's go and see how the, the jacket's getting on. Oh, okay, this is super fucking nasty. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think this is dirt. I think this is the, the starch and the chemicals that normally happen with, with the weaving process of, of denim. But still, this is exactly why I keep telling you guys, like whenever you get a new pair of denim jeans, then please throw them in the tub for a soak. It's not gonna do the, the denim any damage. It's actually gonna do it some good. And you can see the kind of crap that comes out. Still smells a little bit fusty, not gonna lie. I don't know, did the guy just store it in like a dank basement for, for 10 years? But whatever, anyway, it's much, much better than it was. And at least now I know it's clean and I've drowned whatever nasty little spiders were hiding in the pockets. Really, that, that did cross my mind. I did have a look, I was like, maybe I should have a look in the pockets, see if anything's in there, to see if any passengers are in there. Then I thought like, no, 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 no. I'm just, if there is something in there, I'm just gonna drown them. That's gonna be the first thing. Yeah, so, yeah. As I said, not quite as fresh as I was hoping for, but much, much better than it was. And if it really bothers me in the future, then I can just give it a machine wash when I do go to wear it. But for now, it's gonna be fine for, for doing the review, which is gonna come, I don't know. I've been really denim heavy in the videos recently, so maybe a couple of weeks time? Stay tuned. Okay, I think I, I just, just made it in time because our guest is gonna be here any minute and I've got, she's bringing like a whole bunch of baby stuff. So I've got to go downstairs and bring that all upstairs. Uh, these, these tiny things, you need so many of them. 
The okay, forget forget that part. Like, we we bought some stuff. We we caved. We said we were going to buy everything secondhand. It's better for the environment, right? But we caved and we bought some stuff brand new uh, per square centimeter. And you guys know I don't exactly spend a little on clothes. By square centimeter, this is the most expensive uh, piece of clothing that I have ever ever bought. This stuff is ridiculous, and but it's so super super cute. Right, why am I telling you this? No reason at all. Um, before I forget, um, yeah, I don't really need these jeans. So if anybody wants these jeans, then I paid 95 euros for them. So if somebody wants to take them off my hands for, for 90 plus postage, then I'd be very happy. They're a really decent pair of jeans, like honestly, but I've got a couple of other pairs that does exactly the same in my collection. Uh, yeah, just, um, I don't know, drop me a DM on, on Instagram maybe, or, or or leave a comment down below and I, I, I will try and see it. Like the, the notifications for, for the YouTube comments are, are really crap and if you have left me a question or something like that and I've missed it, I'm very, very sorry. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Down below, uh, links to the CRD website, the sales page in particular, that's worth checking out if you do want to find some very affordable jeans or other items as well. Uh, there's the link to the newsletter, which I'm thinking of just making a running gag, like telling everybody to sign up for the newsletter and then never actually send stick out a newsletter. I, it will come sometime, I, I, I hope, I think, or maybe I just do make it a running gag. Yeah, anyway, what else is down below? There's the like and subscribe button and you know what to do with those. Uh, I'm sorry this is so all over the place today, but I did my best. And yeah, so that just, does that just leave me? Yeah, I think that just leaves me to say, guys, as always, I hope everyone is happy and healthy out there. Hope you're taking care of yourselves. Hope you're taking care of each other. And I'll see you in the next video.